Okay, so in the last video I asked you a question um, about the naming convention of the auth variable names. In particular, I, I asked you whether 3x is a proper variable name or not in Python. So what's your answer? Yeah, what do you think? How many of say you, how many of you say no? How many of you say yes? Well, by the way, you might have tried that, declaring that variable name in Jupyter Notebook and then you might have got this answer, one of these. Well, let me tell you the answer is no. Uh, a variable cannot start with a digit. Not with, not with, at the rate of, not with hash symbol, not with, I mean there are several other, the special characters are not there except a few characters, one of those is underscore. Let's go to let's go to Jupyter Notebook and and check this. So, for example, three x equals five. Error, invalid syntax. Let's say at the rate of y equals four. Invalid. Um, star t equals for error. Well, an exception is underscore. Underscore e equals six. That's allowed. Uh, starting a variable name with underscore is allowed. It is different than the underscore that is built in underscore. This is underscore e is different than simply underscore. So it is good to not declare the variable names that start from these because you will be getting errors. Further, variable names should be descriptive. They should give you a look and feel of the data, what they are containing, and you are free to define variable names as as descriptive as you want. So it is a good practice to, to start writing the variable names in a better way. One, um, one better notation, one better notation of defining these variable names, even the function names, we will see the functions later on. Uh, one way to defining those is to use camel notation. Camel notation. Camel notation is you start with the variable name with, for example, um, lowercase letters. Let's say your variable is uh, starting time of the course. Let's say that's your variable name. So you write starting, that's one word, finishes. Then the next word should start from capital T, starting time of the course, let's say. So this kind of notation is called camel notation and very famous, particularly the Java developers, they normally follow this and several other developers. But you should come up with a notation that is one notation. There are other ways of uh, uh, keeping consistently, keeping the consistent strategy of defining variables. Uh, there are several other ways. This is one uh, way. So starting time of the course is, let's say, 2.0, let's say. So that's a variable name. If you, if you now check, that's a variable name. But now, if you see this variable, just, just the name suggests the data inside is doing what? So the names should be descriptive, I mean, and, and make that as a habit. So, yeah. I guess uh, we have now answered our question very concretely that a variable name cannot start with a digit, not with any special character other than underscore. Okay, uh, in the next video, um, I'll be introducing uh, comparisons with, with variables. For example, what if you want to compare whether one variable is smaller than the other or not? What if you want to compare whether the two variables, they are containing values, they are same or not? Um, what if you want to do comparisons of the, of the data that is stored inside the variables and based on the result of the comparison, you want to do something else? So in the next video, we will see a bool data type that is very, very famous and it is used in a lot in decision making. And we will see the comparison operators, sometimes called the relational operators, in the next video. So, hope to see you in the next video. Okay, um, in this video, we are going to talk about a data type which is called bool. 
Um, that's very, very famous data type. Actually, it's the most famous data type because it is used in decision making. All the control flow, most of the control flow depends on this data type. Um, although it is very, very famous, very much applicable data type, it is very simple. It is a data type with just two states, with just two values. By the way, there are capacities of different data types. For example, in, in integer, the different kind of values that you can store are huge. You can store any negative number in it. You can store zero. You can store any positive number. The capacity of floating point number or the number of values that it can save is, is even higher than, even higher than an integer. And the complex number is even higher than that and so on. But the bool data type, it has just two states. One state is true. It has just two values. True is a value and false is a value. Just these two states, true or false. In, in some programming languages, the, the true is denoted by one and the false is denoted by zero. But in Python, the true is just T-R-U-E, true, that thing, and false is false. That's it. If you, for example, define a variable, let's say any variable name, whatever the name is, let's say B, and you assign true, then its its default data type will become bool. Um, and if you have another variable, let's say C, which is false, then C is also bool. One thing that is important, uh, there are other operations other than arithmetic operators that we saw adding, subtraction, division, and stuff. There are other operators that we can apply on bool data type. For example, a true and, and is a keyword combining true and true. If, uh, if there is a variable, let's say A, if there is a Boolean variable A with data true, if there is a Boolean variable B with data true, then A and B is also true. So let's say I've used this variable D in storing this A and B, the D will also be true. So true and true is always true. Further, true and false. This is always false. And this is uh, commutative. For example, true and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. So if you apply and operator and keyword to combine the two Boolean variables together, if both are true, then and will result a true. Otherwise, and will result a false. Um, other than this and, there are there is there is another uh, there is another uh, operator keyword or. So this results false if both are false, 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 false or false is false. If any one of these is true, then the result is true. Remember the difference between and and or. And will result false if any one of the two operands, at least one of the two operands is false, then the result is false. If both are or or and will result true if both of the operands are true, otherwise it is false. Or will result false if both of the operands is false or false, otherwise it is true. So um, you, you now know true, uh, and you now know or there is another operator called not. Uh, this is not. So not, for example, returns uh, not true results false and not false returns true. Great. So not is a unary operator. Unary means it just takes it just takes one variable and operate on that. And is a binary operator like plus is a binary operator. It takes two variables to operate on. Or is a binary operator. It operate. It takes two operators. It takes two variables to operate on, and so on. So remember, uh, remember uh, these things. One and will return true if both of the variables are true. Otherwise, the result is false. Or will result false if both are false. Otherwise, it will return true. 
and not is not just flips the the state so not true means false not false means true so these are basically th that's how you can combine the boolean variables together uh, in the next video we will be seeing how to apply these comparison operators and the result will be boolean types and how can we combine the boolean types together to to build a better decision making so in this particular video i just uh, i just introduced the boolean data type for you, with you in the next video we will see uh, where the boolean data type actually appears and how it impacts our 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 programming style or thinking style or coding style so hope to see you in the next video with comparison operators that actually produces the boolean variables hope to see you in the next video okay in the last video i discussed boolean data type and uh, i discussed that a boolean variable takes either a true or a false and we can combine these boolean variables together uh, with and or uh, operators and then uh, we can apply a not operator on a particular variable and we we saw that a true and true returns true and and uh, otherwise returns returns false similarly a false or false is false otherwise or always returns a, a true um, uh, before before actually discussing these uh, comparison operators let's jo let's just go to jupiter and just just play with a boolean data type uh, just just for a, just for a moment um, let us just con convert this to markdown cell and just write bool that's a bool, boolean variable so let's say uh, a is true and b is true and c is false false and uh, okay so these are our variables let's press uh, who's to see what are the states of so a is a boolean variable with value true b is a boolean variable with value true c is a boolean variable with value false so now a is true b is true c is false so let me let me print print a and b what do you think what was what will be the result uh, let me print a and c what will be the result and let me print uh, c and a so because a and b both are true the first result will be true because c is false false true and true is true the 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 other two statements they will result false so first value will be true then false false so yes true false false let's let's check the or print and by the way let's store that or in another variable let's say a is true or c is false so what do you think what will be the uh, result here because or gives false when both are false here a is true so the value of d will be true further um, not a because a is uh, true not a will be false similarly not b b is true so not b will be false uh, not c uh, c is true c is false so not c will be true similarly not d we can save the result in another variable let's say t and we can just check the type of t if we want that's a boolean we can also check the value inside t and that is false um so uh, yes not only that i mean we can we can we can we can combine at a higher level for example a and a and b whatever the result is or um, c or d whatever the result is and whatever the result is not of that i i mean we can we can combine them in a very complicated way if we want a and b the result will be some boolean that boolean and that boolean there are the result eventually will be a boolean and then not of that so let's check what if that is the result is false well 
why the result is false um, figure it out why the result is false let me go to comparison operators uh, so the comparison operators let me just um, uh, go to comparison operators this equal equal to it compares whether two variables whether whatever the variables are whether they are integer floating point whatever whether two variables are are they have same data or not for example x equals equals to y that will be true if x and y they both have same data so for example if x has value 4 and y has value 4 then we are just checking x equal equal to y or not the result will be boolean because and x may not be a boolean variable y may not be a boolean variable if you want to compare the values of x and y then we write double equal without a space inside remember if we write single equal that will be an assignment operator if we write double equal that means we are checking whether the two values are same or not similarly if we write this particular symbol that checks whether two values are not equal or not for example x is not equal to y the result will be true if x and y they both have different values otherwise the result will be false remember the result of comparison is always a boolean it is either true or false okay next we check whether less than so for example if x is less than y the result will be true if x indeed has a value that is smaller than y let's say x is 2 and y is 10 in that case the result will be a true otherwise the result will be false similarly we can compare the two variables using greater than we can compare the two variables by uh, less or whether whether the whether one variable less or equal to the other for example if x is less or equal to y the result will be true of this comparison the result will be true if x has a value that is not larger than y as long as x and y they are equal or x is smaller than y in any case the result will be true otherwise false similarly greater than or equal to okay so uh, i end this video here in the next video we will be uh, we will be moving to jupiter and playing with these operators and seeing the return types of booleans and then combining them together with ands and ors and doing doing uh, interesting stuff with that in this particular video i just uh, talk about um, the comparison operators the boolean data type and combining them by and or not in the next video we'll be first moving to jupiter we will see the comparison operators we will write all these statements in jupiter and just get a good hands-on grip on that and then we'll be moving onwards so hope to see you in the next video